Welcome to the longest running, the original, the only trilingual Filipino Chinese lifestyle magazine show, Chinatown TV. I'm your host, Candice Stan. Ning xian dai shou kan de shi fei zhong dian shi tai. Experience the vibrant tapestry of tradition and celebrations as we bring you the enchanting post-event video highlights of the 2024 Chinese New Year reception, hosted by the Embassy of the People's Republic of China at the Shangri-La the Fourth, the Big City, last 2nd of February, 2024. The post-event video highlights will guide you through captivating performances that adorn the occasion. Featuring traditional lion and dragon dances that ignited the stage with vibrant energy, experience the harmonious melodies of classical Chinese music, infusing the air with cultural richness. As we unfold the moments that define this celebration, you will catch glimpses of dignitaries, diplomats, and esteemed guests all gathered to embrace the warmth of the Year of the Dragon. Stay tuned for a visual symphony of colors, performances. An unforgettable moment that encapsulates the essence of this joyous celebration. It is、uh, a joyous moment for us to gather here today in celebration of the Chinese New Year of the Dragon, or what we call in Chinese Longyan. My、uh, warmest welcome and sincerest greetings to all of you here this evening. According to the Chinese culture, Long is a sacred and auspicious animal to mark a year, representing honor, strength, and good fortune. The Spring Festival, one most important Chinese tradition, is now being celebrated in different ways by one fifth of the population around the world, including Filipinos. May the year of the dragon, marked by its powerful symbol of strength and renewal, bring us all good health, success, and renewed hope. As we embark on this new cycle, let us seize the opportunity to strengthen our bonds, promote understanding, and work together towards a harmonious future for all. As we look forward to the Year of the Dragon, we take this opportunity to recognize our Chinese Filipinos playing crucial roles in nation building, as pillars of the economy, and as bearers of our rich cultural diversity. We recall their contributions, honor their heritage, and celebrate the crucial role that they play in our national life. Wishing you a happy Christmas, a happy New Year, and a happy Long Year, Da Ji.
Alam mo ba, kapag Chinese New Year, di pwedeng walang pa-fireworks display. Tara, busisiin natin ang kwento ng mga pailo na to at bakit sila sobrang importante sa Chinese New Year celebration. Ang pagsisindi ng fireworks during Chinese New Year ay may malalim na kahulugan. Chinese people believe that fire and loudness can dispel bad luck and scare away evil spirits. Kwento time! Noon ay may isang halimaw na tinatawag na Nian na lumalabas tuwing Chinese New Year's Eve para kumain ng tao at wasake ng kanilang ani. Isang araw na discover ng mga tao na natatakot si Monster Nian sa apoy at malakas na ingay. Kaya sinunog nila ang mga bamboo stems para takutin si Nian tuwing New Year's Eve. From then on, Nian never comes back. At ang pagsisindi ng fireworks ay naging tradisyon na. Galing ang mga fireworks sa gunpowder na original na naimbento sa ancient China. Bago pa ang gunpowder, bamboo stems ang sinusunog ng mga tao sa Han Dynasty para magkaroon ng maliit na pagsabog. Noong Tang Dynasty naman, naimbento ang gunpowder at naging mas bongga ang pagsabog ng mga bamboo na to. Sa Song Dynasty, nag-evolve ang gunpowder at naging fireworks na for entertainment purposes. Lumabas ang fireworks na balot sa papel na may gunpowder. Tinawag itong Pao Chang o Pian Pao. Sa modernong panahon, hindi na lang pampatanggal malas ang fireworks. The firework is not only a noisemaker but also a flower cracker. People add some metal elements to fireworks to enhance the flame reaction. In this way, the fireworks burning with colored flames and sparks are as beautiful as a flower. At tinawag itong yanwa or flower. Kitipagdiwag natin ang Chinese New Year na puno ng spark at positivity. Sumapit na tayo sa bagong siklo ng Chinese Zodiac, kasabay ng Lunar New Year o Spring Festival. Sa ikasampo ng Pebrero 2024, magsisimula na ang Taon ng Dragon. Ang Dragon, isang makapangyarihan at mapalad na nilalang sa mitolohiyang Chino, ay sumisimbolo sa tapang, pagkamalikain at inubasyon. Ang 2024 ay puno ng posibilidad at pagkakataon. Ang mga taong dragon ay kilala sa kanilang karisma, ambisyon, pakikipagsapalaran at kawalan ng takot. Sila ay may tiwala sa sarili, independente at may malinaw na pangitain. Hindi sila natatakot na habulin ang kanilang mga pangarap at layunin. Kaya naman ang taon ng dragon sa 2024 ay inaasang magiging panahon ng mga visionary leaders, innovators at problem solvers. Magiging magandang taon din ito para sa pagsisimula ng bagong mga proyekto, pagtuklas ng bagong oportunidad at paglikha ng halaga para sa sarili at sa iba. Ilan sa pinaka-promising na sektor para sa paglago ng negosyo sa taon ng Dragon ay ang fintech, AI, cybersecurity, blockchain at solar energy. Ang mga industriya ang ito ay hinimok ng inovasyon at pangangailangan para sa cutting-edge solutions. Upang magtagumpay sa mga competitive na market na ito, kailangang yakapin ng mga negosyo ang bagong teknolohiya at maiparating ng epektibo ang kanilang value proposition. Espesyal ang taon ng Wood Dragon 2024 dahil ito ay bihirang kombinasyon ng kapangyarihan ng dragon at pagkamalikain ng kahoy. Ito ang taon para habulin ang iyong mga pangarap, ipahayag ang iyong mga ideya at palawakin ang iyong abot tanaw. Ito rin ay taon upang maging mapagbigay, maawain at tapat sa iyong mga kaibigan. Ang susunod na taon ng Wood Dragon sa Chinese Zodiac ay magaganap sa 2084 na anim na pong taon mula ngayon. Sa kanyang pagbisita sa Tianjin Municipality mula February 1 hanggang 2, nagpadala ng mga pagbati si Chinese President Xi Jinping para sa Spring Festival sa lahat ng mga mamamayang Chino. Nagbigay si Xi ng mga pagbati ng malusog at masayang Chinese New Year sa lahat ng mga Chino, kasama na mga kababayan sa Hong Kong, Macau, Taiwan at ang mga Chino sa ibang bansa. Inaasam din niya ang kasaganahan para sa kanyang bayang tinubuan. Bilang bahagi ng kanyang tradisyon, matagal nang ginaganpa ng si ang pagbisita sa mga ordinaryong tao, lalong-lalo na ang mga nasa mahihirap na sektor bago dumating ang Spring Festival, ang pinakamahalagang pagdiriwang sa China. 
Sa layuning, itaguyod ang pagkakaibigan sa pagitan ng mga mamamayan ng China at mga bansa ng ASEAN. Nagpadala ng pagbati si Chinese Premier Li Qiang noong February 2 sa seremonya ng paglulunsad ng China-ASEAN Year of People-to-People -People Exchanges. Sa kanyang liham, sinabi ni Li na umaasa ang China ng pagtulungan sa mga bansa ng ASEAN upang gamitin ang China-ASEAN Year of People-to-People -People Exchanges bilang pagkakataon upang itaguyod ang pag-unawa at pagkakaibigan sa pagitan ng mga mamamayan ng dalawang pani. Layunin din ito ang pagtataguyod na mas malapit na ugnayan sa pagitan ng China at ASEAN na mayroong iisang hinaharap at ang pagtatag ng isang mapayapang, ligtas at paunlad na bayan na puno ng kagandahan at kabutihan. Ang pinaka-inaabangan at pinaka-pinapanood na Spring Festival TV Gala sa China ay pinasimulan na. Ang taon ng pagdiriwang na ito ay isang espesyal na event ng China Media Group o CMG at nag-umpisa ng 8pm noong February 9, oras ng Beijing. Ang gala ay isang komprehensibong palabas na may tagal na apat at kalahating oras na binubuo ng kantahan at sayaw, opera, sketch comedy, crosstalk, martial arts at acrobatics. Ito ay nagtatagal hanggang sa madaling araw ng bagong taon. Simula noong 1983, ang gala ay isang tradisyon at hindi mawawala para sa maraming mamamayang Chino na itinuturing itong bahagi ng kanilang pagdiriwang ng Chinese New Year kasama ang pamilya habang nagtitipon sa harap ng kanilang mga TV na may bit-bit na mga pampatamis handang masilayan ang bawat sandali ng kahangahangang performances. Ang China Media Group o CMG ay nagdaraos na isang cultural presentation sa Palace of Nations, tahanan ng United Nations Office sa Geneva, Switzerland, noong February 2 upang ipagdiwang ang Chinese Spring Festival at itaguyod ang Spring Festival Gala ng CMG. Ang kaganapan na tinatawag na Prelude to Spring Festival Gala na inilunsad na rin sa United States at Kenya ay dinaluhan ng higit sa 300 mga kinatawan at diplomatiko mula sa iba't ibang bansa. Ang mga kalahok ay gumawa ng dumplings, nagtatad ng paper window decorations at nag-insayo ng Chinese calligraphy upang maranasan ang pinakamahalagang tradisyonal na pista sa China. Ang ekonomiya ng China ay inaasahang magtataglay ng katamtamang pag-angat ngayong taon habang patuloy ang mga bansa sa buong mundo sa kanilang sariling landas ayon sa pinakabagong projection mula sa Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development o OECD. Sa kabila ng hindi pantay-pantay na paglago sa iba't ibang bansa at regyon at patuloy na mataas na inflation rate, sinabi ng ulat, ang pandaigdigang paglago ay nananatili ayon sa pinakabagong interim economic outlook ng OECD na inilabas noong February 5. Sa isang maliit na isla sa hilagang kalulurang bahagi na Hefei, ang kabisera ng East China's Anhui Province, nagana pang eksitasyon dahil sa operasyon ng Experimental Advanced Superconducting Tokamak o East na mas kilala bilang Chinese Artificial Sun. Mahigit sa isang daan na siyentipiko mula sa China at iba't ibang bansa ang nagsagawa ng mga pagsusuri sa physics. Pinatawag na East ITER, International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, sa Science Island na tahanan ng East. Layunin ng mga eksperimento na solusyonan ng mga teknikal na suliranin para sa internasyonal na proteksyong pananaliksik at inhenyeriya sa nuclear fusion na tinatawag na ITER. Ang pangunahing layunin ng East ay ang makalikha ng nuclear fusion tulad ng araw gamit ang mga sangkap na sagana sa karagatan upang magbigay ng patuloy na supply ng malinis na enerhiya. Welcome back, you're still watching Chinatown TV with me, your host, Isa Chong. China's rich cultural heritage spans over 5,000 years at sinasabing isa ito sa pinakamatanda at complex cultures in the world. With its unique customs, traditions, and practices, China has a lot to offer to those who are interested in exploring its fascinating culture. As we delve into the vast and diverse culture of China, ating kikilalanin ng kanilang mayamang kultura na nagpasalin-salin na sa mga henerasyon. From traditional Chinese medicine to the art of calligraphy, there is much to explore and learn about. Join us on our journey to uncover these fascinating aspects of Chinese culture and more as we delve deeper into the wonders of this ancient and diverse civilization. Ang Red Over the Mountains ay nilikha ni Li Keran noong 1963 matapos niyang maglakbay ng malawak sa buong bansa. Ibinukas niya ang isang bagong tanawi na para sa pagsasalaysay ng sining, nagtangkang baguhin ng gamit ng kulay sa traditional na sining ng China.
Sa pangungunan ni Shang Hui, ang direktor ng China Artists Association at mga espesyalista ang tinawag sa pagsusuri, masusing inilararawan ng video ang kahalagahan ng obra ni Li Keran sa kasaysayan ng sining ng China. Sa gitna ng tradisyon at pagsasanib, matututunan natin na paglalakbay ni Li Keran sa isang kagubatan sa Kwangtong noong 1963 na nagbigay inspirasyon sa paglikha ng Red Over the Mountains. Deep in the autumn mountains, a stream flows from a distant source. Meandering and trickling, it travels through majestic landscapes, then plunges down in a spectacular waterfall. The land is draped in red leaves, forming a vivid contrast with the dyed mountains that rise in the horizon. The towering cliffs are erect like monuments, as if they aspire to reach the sky. Red Over the Mountains is the work of Chinese painter Li Keran in 1963, after his extensive travels across the country. He revolutionized the use of color in Chinese painting, opening a new horizon for artistic expression. In traditional Chinese landscape paintings, Light watercolors are used to show reclusiveness and nobility, heavy gold for affluence and majesty, or blue and green for delicate beauty. Red over the mountains didn't fit into any of these categories and chose red for its central motif in a bold attempt. Different shades of red were layered upon each other, building up space and depth on Xuan paper until the endless autumn forest screams with the color. This piece of work in Chinese painting is a new opening. The main reason for the opening is that the green can be painted in the dark forest. The origin of this new approach can be traced back to a trip made by the artist in 1963 to a cedar forest near the Tropic of Cancer in southern China. Then, 56 years old, Li Keran was a highly respected professor at China's Central Academy of Fine Arts. He was 10 years into his traveling and sketching journeys, covering tens of thousands of miles across the country. The real mountains and rivers that he saw not only enriched his paintings, but also enabled him to see the limitations of traditional painting techniques. He felt the need for a breakthrough. In Li Keran's paintings from that period, viewers can find the brush and ink style from traditional Chinese painting, and also his adoption of philosophy in Western oil paintings which emphasized light and shadow and the impression of colors. Chinese and Western painting styles fused wonderfully in his works. In 1963, the painter lost himself in awe of the resplendent cedar forest in southern China's Guangdong province. He was hit with inspiration by the mountains and hills covered in red and had to capture it in his paintings. Combining the ink accumulation method with oil painting techniques, Li Keran applied red dots layer after layer. He illustrated the fiery autumn scenery with such intensity as if he was pouring ink directly from his heart.
，是染到画面上，还是用积墨的方法积彩积到画面上，把墨转化成朱砂，一层一层点上去，这才是关键。这个主峰在画面正中间迎面而来，这是所有的山水画中都回避的。这种语言本身带有这个时代的气息，并不仅仅是他用了红颜色，具有形式美感，还重要的是他的表达的一种精神境界的一种雄伟，一种博大。Lee Guerin's painting "Red Over the Mountains" was named after a poem, and its distinctive red color speaks of the poetic romance of nature's beauty. It's also a powerful statement of the painter's passion for the magnificent landscape he saw and loved. Noong January 15, 2024, inihayag na Nauru na kinikilala na nito ang One China Principle at itinigil na ang ugnayan sa mga otoridad ng rehiyon ng Taiwan. Si Lionel Anjimea, ang ministrong panlabas na Nauru at dating Pangulo ng Bansa, ay nagpahayag sa CMG uko sa desisyong ito. Ayon sa kanya, ang pagtanggap sa One China Principle ay batay sa pambansang interes at layunin ng bansa na palakasin ang ugnayan nito sa China. Idinagdag pa niya na ang pagpili na sumunod sa One China Principle ay nasa tamang bahagi ng kasaysayan. Sa likod ng mahalagang pahayag na ito, tayo'y dadalhin sa kabo ang kahulugan ng desisyong ito na Nauru. Makikita natin ang kanilang pananaw sa pangkalahatang patakaran ukol sa China at Taiwan at paano ito naglalarawan sa larangan ng politika at diplomasya. Samahan niyo kami sa pag-unlad ng pangyayari at pag-unawa sa pangunahing patakaran na kinilala ng Nauru. Sa pag-asa mapanatili ang kanilang pagkakaibigan at pagsasama sa pandaigdigang komunidad. Well, one of the key messages about this move is that Nauru recognizes one China principle and adopts the UNG 2758 resolution in recognizing there is but one China, one China in the world. Yes. So, how do you understand the one China principle? My understanding of the one China principle is that anything that deals with the one China principle what in, the, in all our dealings with China and the rest of the world that touches on China, that will be at the forefront of our foreign policy is the One China Principle. How does the Nauru government plan to adhere to the One China Principle? In adhering to the One China Principle is to ensure that all that we do, whenever it touches China, complies with the One China Principle. This is the relationship, even though it's new, the welcoming gesture of China made us feel as we were an old friend. Mm -hmm. Not just an old friend of 10 years, 20 years, say, like an old friend of 100 years, 200 years. Well, on January the 15th, the Nauru government announced that uh, it recognizes the One China principle and severed its uh, so-called diplomatic relations with Taiwan. Well, Mr. Foreign Minister, as you just mentioned, this is not a decision made by a single person, but a collective decision, a motion that uh, was approved and passed by the uh, parliament of Nauru. So what are the uh, rationale behind such a decision? Well, you've done your research quite well. And like I said, it was a decision not instantaneous, it's in, in its making. It was a decision that has been steadily coming along. Mm -hmm. Now, the rationale behind it, of course, is about Nauru's development strategy. No country, no developing country wants to be left behind. China stepping in, second biggest economy. It is branching out in international aid, unprecedented in the last hundred years. Why not come on board? Why not partner with China in Nauru? I mean, we've got a big Chinese population in Nauru. We've got a lot of imports coming in from China into Nauru. We've got a Chinese company building our ports. We've got a Chinese company, same Chinese company, helping establish our cable link to our uh, solar panels to help with uh, renewable energy. So all of that was already happening on island. 
what were the uh, political, um, the politicians, they were thinking about, you know, restoring diplomatic relations with China. And also, you, I, I believe you've been talking to your people since this decision was made. What are their response like? The decision within, within Cabinet and Caucus was very strong. Mm -hmm. There was robust discussions, there was frank discussions, and we looked at overall the picture of what it means for Nauru. The decision was made at the executive level, and we recognised the One China policy. To reassure the Nauruan people, we took it to Parliament the next day. That parliament sitting basically really had nothing but the discussion and the debate mm -hmm. on the recognition of the One China principle by the government of Nauru. The motion was put on the table or on the floor by His Excellency the President of Nauru, David Adyang. I seconded the motion and debate ensued. But the amazing part of that story was that when a division was called in parliament and those who were asked to support the motion were asked to stand, every single member of parliament stood. Shows the absolute bilateral unity of parliament in supporting the recognition of the One China Principle. My resolve in following the One China Principle was absolutely stout, strong, set in concrete. Well, in recent years, we've seen other countries choosing to cut ties with Taiwan and uh, establish or restore diplomatic relations with China. Many believe that this shows the One China principle is where the global opinion trends and the arc of history bends. So what's your take on this trend? Well, I mean, I think we're the number in 183rd, eight, one, 183rd yes. country to have recognized the One China principle. Mm -hmm. It's the trend of the world, isn't it? It's unavoidable. This is the right side of history. I, we have a saying back home where <clears throat> one drop of water mm -hmm creates an ocean in a lifetime. And I said, the ocean will be the gavel, like a judge hitting mm -hmm. to judge that Nauru stands on the right side of history. Festival, ang pinaka-importanting piyesta sa kanilang kalendaryo. Ipinagdiriwang ito sa simula ng bagong Lunar New Year at sa pagdating ng Tagsibol. Sa 2024, magsisimula ito sa ikasampo ng Pebrero at tatagal ng labing limang araw. Handa na ba kayong salubungin ng Chinese New Year ngayong 2024? Alamin natin ang mga tradisyonal na pagkaing magdadala ng swerte at kasaganaan sa ating lahat. 
Una, ang dumplings, na simbolo ng kayamanan at kasaganaan dahil sa hugis itong parang goat ingots. Karaniwang may laman itong karne o gulay. Kung mas marami kang kainin, mas maraming swerte ang darating. Sunod ang spring rolls na kawangis ng gold bars. Ito'y ginagawa mula sa iba't ibang palaman tulad ng repolyo, carrots, mushrooms o karne. Ito'y simbolo ng kayamanan at kaligayahan. Hindi rin mawawala ang rice cakes na gawa sa malagkit na bigas. Ito'y maaring matamis o maalat at simbolo ng pag-angat sa buhay at kita. Ang mga oranges and tangerines naman ay nagdadala ng swerte at kayamanan. Madalas itong makita bilang dekorasyon o ipinamimigay bilang regalo. Ang isda na dapat ihain ng buo ay simbolo ng sobra-sobra at tuloy-tuloy na yaman. Mahalagang hindi ito dapat baligtarin sa mesa para iwas malas. Ang noodles naman ay simbolo ng mahabang buhay at kaligayahan. Mahalagang lutuin ito ng buo at hindi dapat putulin. Ang cake na simbolo ng swerte at kasiyahan ay hindi rin dapat mawala. Ano mang uli ng cake ay pwede, basta't masarap at malambot. Kaya naman ngayong darating na bagong taon, subukan natin ang mga maswerteng pagkain ito. Sana'y magdala ang mga ito ng swerte, kasaganaan at kaligayahan sa ating lahat. Maligayang bagong taon! Sa sinaunang kasanayan ng feng shui, ang mga kulay ay may malalim na epekto sa ating mood, energy at kagalingan. Pero paano natin malalaman kung aling mga kulay ang pinakamaswerte para sa bawat taon? Ngayong 2024, ayon sa Chinese Zodiac, ito ang taon ng Wood Dragon. Ang Wood Dragon ay simbolo ng lakas, tapang, malikaing pag-iisip at inovasyon. Ang maswerteng mga kulay para sa taong ito ay hango sa mga elementong wood at earth na siyang pangunahing enerhiya ng dragon. Ang Emerald Green, ang pinakamaswerteng kulay ng 2024. Ito ang kulay ng kahoy, ang elemento ng dragon. Simbolo ito ng pagkakasundo, malikhaing pag-iisip at inovasyon. Makakatulong ito upang palawakin ang iyong pangarap at inspirasyon sa pag-abot ng iyong mga layunin. Ang Imperial Yellow or Yellow Gold naman ay sumisimbolo sa yaman, kapangyarihan at kasaganaan. Ang mayaman at mahalik ang kulay na ito ay makakatulong sa iyong maakit ang kasaganaan at tagumpay sa iba't ibang aspeto ng iyong buhay. Pula, ang kulay ng apoy, simbolo ng damdamin at sigla. Makakapagbigay ito ng kasiglahan at magpapataas ng iyong kumpiyansa at tapang. Sa paggamit ng mga kulay na ito sa iyong paligid, maaari mong maakit ang magandang swerte at pagkakatugma-tugma sa iyong kapaligiran. Tandaan, ang bawat kulay ay may kahulugan at lakas na makakaapekto sa ating pang-araw-araw na buhay. Subukan nating isama ang mga maswerteng kulay na ito sa ating tahanan o opisina ngayong 2024. Naway magdala sila ng swerte, kasaganaan at positibong enerhiya sa ating lahat. Maligayang bagong taon! The Chinese Embassy in the Philippines held the 2024 New Year celebration for the Chinese students and scholars in the Philippines. Chongguo Chu Philippine Shiguan Chu Ban Long Xing Si Lu Qing Chun Huan Jia Guo Meng 二零二四年全非中国学生学者迎新春联欢会。据中国驻菲律宾使馆消息，二零二四年一月三十号，由中国驻菲律宾大使馆主办。全非中国学生学者联合会承办的“龙行思路情，春幻家国梦”，二零二四年全非中国学生学者迎新春联欢会在马尼拉举行。中国驻菲律宾大使黄希林出席活动，并与刘飞学子共迎新春。驻菲使馆黄雅萍参赞，熊胜参赞，飞华商联总会副理事长、文教督导洪建雄、克里斯汀大学副校长廖勇、央梅。以及在非中国学生学者代表等五百余人参加现场活动。黄大使在这次中庆与留学生要补学不贷。
争做时代赛道的领跑者，在时代大潮中坐立奋发，尽显才能，成就自己的一番事业。要守正创新，争做爱国主义的坚守者，自觉将个人成功融入到强国建设和民族复兴伟业进程中。要担当作为，争做中非友好的建设者。为促进两国人民相知相亲发挥应有的作用。全非中国学联联席主席罗嘉毅代表全体留学生致辞。他表示，留非学子将始终怀揣着对祖国深深的眷恋，深耕研究领域，早日学成，报效祖国，积极担当中非友谊民间使者，为服务中非外交大局和构建人类命运共同体贡献应有力量。本次联欢会演职人员全部来自在非留学生，通过舞龙舞狮、唱歌、舞蹈、乐器演奏、朗诵、功夫表演、中国书法及唐画制作等多种方式，呈现中华优秀传统文化魅力，展现当代中国青年昂扬向上的青春活力。联欢会上，黄大使向留非学子特别送上新春暖心包。以表达祖国对海外留学生的青春祝福和牵挂，向广大海外留学生传递党和政府的关心和关爱。现场留学生纷纷感谢大使馆一直以来对留学生群体的关心关怀，感谢来自祖国的新春祝福和问候。非中新闻台综合报道。The Filipino Chinese Youth Business Association, Incorporated, held the Chinese New Year celebration. 飞华青商会举行庆祝新春佳节联欢晚会。为迎接即将到来的新春佳节，飞华青商会于二零二四年二月一号晚，假作世纪海鲜酒家，举行甲辰年新春联欢晚会。本次活动特别邀请到了马尼拉市长拉库纳、该会指导员洪吉祥，以及该会的友好团体和结盟商会、华文媒体朋友们。大家欢聚一堂，共度佳节。会长曾飞虎致新春贺词，他首先感谢该会同仁们一直以来对青商会的支持与热爱，不辞辛苦的早起参加当天由青商会联合菲律宾参议员艾米马克思在内湖省举办的慈善活动，以及下午在花园口参加庆春节活动。他表示。青商会在各位同仁们的积极参与下，取得了丰硕的成果，这都是大家共同努力的结果。在新的一年里，希望大家携手同行，共同迎接挑战，创造更加灿烂的明天，书写商会发展的新篇章。马尼拉市长拉库纳在致辞中感谢该会在当天下午组织参加中国城花园口的贺新春活动。他参赞该会的成员们都很年轻，充满活力且热心公益活动，并祝福大家新年快乐。该会文艺委员施佩文担任联欢晚会主持人，并介绍当晚出席的嘉宾代表。该会指导员洪吉祥、创会会长蔡荣轩也先后致新春贺词和祝福，然后进行抽奖和歌舞节目。出席当晚的美人还获得会长曾飞虎赠送节日年糕，大家在满怀欢喜的心情圆满结束当晚的活动。非中新闻台综合报道。The Chinese Embassy in the Philippines held the annual Friends of the Chinese Embassy Awarding Ceremony 2023. 中国驻菲律宾大使馆举办二零二三年度使馆之友系列奖项颁奖仪式。综合中国驻菲大使馆及中新社消息，中国驻菲律宾大使馆二月一号在马尼拉举办二零二三年度使馆之友系列奖项颁奖仪式，表彰在过去一年大力支持中国驻菲使领馆工作、积极推动中非友好交流的各界人士及团体。当天共有三十位杰出个人及七个团体荣获表彰。中国驻菲律宾大使黄希莲向获奖者表示祝贺，并对他们在促进中非关系发展中所做贡献表示感谢。他寄望得奖者继续为中非友好注入正能量，不断夯实两国友好的民意基础，推动中非关系行稳致远。荣获使馆之友杰出贡献奖的有。
、飞华各界联合会主席蔡永宁、菲律宾中国红门联合总会理事长蔡志和、菲律宾华裔青年联合会创会会长洪玉华、菲律宾中国商会会长侯世炼、飞华商联总会理事长施东方博士、菲律宾中国红门志工党总部主席吴启发、有利东方集团董事长许忠荣。使馆之友优异表现奖获奖者包括菲律宾慈桥基金会董事长蔡忠义、菲律宾素武飞华联谊会理事长、菲律宾素武华助中心主任郭亚平、旅飞各校友会联合会参议委员洪培利、世界日报常务副总编侯培水、菲律宾中国和平统一促进会副会长柯维汉、碧瑶飞华商会理事长武东荣、马尼拉华人区义诊中心名誉会长吴子文、达斯马里纳。纳斯村原村长若山纳黄、达沃市长特别助理、中国投资协调人理查德·恩帕西斯以及 Sharon d u n 荣获使馆之友突出奉献奖的有飞华各界联合会青年基金委员会执行副主委蔡长城、飞华联谊会北伊罗哥省分会副会长兼秘书长、北伊罗哥省投资发展中心顾问和中国事务部负责人林顺、菲律宾广西总商会执行会长罗毅飞、菲律宾。国家调查局探员王仁杰，菲律宾华兴艺术团团长张怀义，阿罗约前总统、中国事务特别助理庄凯仲，马尼拉中国事务协调办公室副主任欧文寿，荣获专项奖、华文教育团体奖的有陈延奎基金会、飞华商联总会文教委员会、菲律宾华教中心、菲律宾华侨善举总会、菲律宾晋江同乡总会、菲律宾中西学院和伊朗新华学院。而荣获专项奖、华文教育个人奖的有菲律宾光启学校校长陈梦丽、菲律宾百格公民学校校长林文成、菲律宾中华总商会名誉理事长卢祖印、奢明培纪念基金会董事长施书好、菲律宾红溪理事丽人中学校长苏智能，以及达沃中华中学中文部教务主任甄玫瑰。随后。几位获奖者代表上台分享获奖心情。菲律宾中国红门志工党总部主席吴启发和碧瑶飞华商会理事长武东荣分享他们多年来在支持使馆工作、推动中非友好交流方面的经验。菲律宾中华总商会名誉理事长卢祖印和陈延奎基金会总经理。林伟立分享他们在新的一年里准备怎么样继续支持配合使馆做好华文教育这项工作。期间，菲律宾侨中学院和菲律宾中正学院的同学们带来了精彩的歌舞表演。非中新闻台副台长庄玲玲担任主持人。非中新闻台综合报道。有利东方旅游有限公司 Union Travel Incorporated。The Manila City Government and the Filipino Chinese Associations jointly launched activities to celebrate the Chinese New Year. Manila City Government and Hua Sheng Community Association jointly launched the Chinese New Year. 二零二四年二月一号下午四时，为迎接即将到来的中国农历春节暨庆祝马尼拉市华人区创建四百三十周年，由由马尼拉市政府、马尼拉华人区发展委员会、华人区苗龙雅组织及马尼拉观光、文化、艺术局等联合华社各团体共同举办的迎新春倒计时亮灯仪式，在明伦诺花园口隆重举行。马尼拉市长拉库纳、马尼拉第三区众议员蔡促一、马尼拉市议员、马尼拉市政府行政官洪英忠、华人区发展委员会主席蔡真卫、华人区苗龙雅组织主席刘少强、菲律宾观光部首都地区办事处处长巴婷，以及各主要华社团体代表和各媒体出席活动。首先，由马尼拉市政府乐队弹奏多首著名非中歌曲拉开序幕，再由华校舞蹈团体及武术社团精湛演出。市府行政官洪英忠致欢迎词，马尼拉市长拉库纳、众议员蔡促一及巴婷处长为醒狮点睛，并先后上台致辞。
华工商总会理事长谢国万代表华社团体致辞时说：“马尼拉华人区成立于一五九四年三月二十九日，是一个充满活力的商贸区，是中非文化集聚之地，更是中非友好源远,远流长的历史见证。”飞华青商会特别提供甜果，与市长拉库纳一起分发给现场的菲律宾弱势家庭和孩童。当晚七时，亮灯仪式正式开始，在众人的欢呼声中，花园口广场中央的金钱树顿时亮起闪闪金光，璀璨四射，如同繁星点点，把整个花园广场衬托得熠熠生辉，令人眼前一亮。马尼拉华人区闻名遐迩，享誉世界，为全球最古老的中国城。该场倒计时亮灯仪式，标志着创建四百三十周年系列庆祝活动的开启。非中新闻台综合报道。The Philippine Institute of Quezon City held a celebration of its 60th founding anniversary. 济顺市飞华中学举行创校六十周年庆典。二零二四年二月四号中午，济顺市飞华中学校友会甲座马尼拉大酒店大宴会厅隆重举行庆祝母校建校六十周年校庆典礼，飞华有校代表、社团代表、嘉宾等应邀出席典礼仪式。校友会理事长柯如露担任大会主席，他在致辞中对母校六十甲子生日表示热烈祝贺，对母校的栽培表示感恩。同时，他也感谢校友们对母校的回馈，以及对校友会工作的支持。中国驻菲律宾大使馆王悦参赞兼总领事出席并致辞。济顺市飞华商会永远名誉理事长、校友会指导员蔡聪妙博士出席并演讲。飞华商联总会理事长施东方博士、飞华各界联合会主席蔡永宁、济顺市飞华商会决策委员徐焕然、济顺市飞华中学校董会董事长洪建雄。济顺市飞华中学校长李淑慧等先后致辞。李淑慧校长在致辞中代表学校李董事会及全体师生向校友会表达诚挚的谢意，感谢他们在学校推动了捐献助学基金、评定退休教师的生活津贴、校友子女在本校就学的奖励金等方案。他同时祝愿济顺飞华冲破春寒料峭，迎来春暖花开，校运昌隆，永续辉煌。期间，颁发六十周年校庆活动捐赠者奖牌，颁发杰出校友奖和大学高荣誉毕业校友奖。颁发篮球和保龄球队感谢状。随后，校友会捐献母校教育金以及致赠退休师长奖励金。庆典大会共同主席、校友会执行副理事长柯志超致谢词，张春雨、叶天慧、陈海慧担任大会司仪，并介绍主宾、席宾。典礼仪式之后，进行了聚餐、祝酒、抽奖以及娱乐节目表演等活动。中新闻台综合报道。The Chinese Embassy in the Philippines held the 10th anniversary celebration of the Chinese Ambassador Scholarship. 中国驻菲律宾使馆举办中国大使奖学金十周年纪念会。据中国驻菲律宾使馆消息，二零二四年二月五号，中国驻菲律宾使馆举办中国大使奖学金十周年纪念会。
暨奖学金获得者和教师代表联欢会。中国驻菲律宾大使黄希莲，菲律宾师范大学校长杜佳博士，副校长杨森博士，菲律宾大学副校长阿格鲍瓦教授。两校学生工作和奖学金事务负责人，二零一四年至二零二四年奖学金生代表等近一百人出席。Scholars from the University of UP and NU have benefited from this scholarship. I would also like to extend appreciation to both universities for your collaboration and support in making this scholarship program success. Wang Dashi said. 在座的每一位奖学金得主都肩负着文化使者的神圣使命，希望他们能向非社会讲好中国故事和中非友好故事，积极促进两国各领域交流合作，共同参与构建人类命运共同体的伟大事业。This auspicious occasion not only marks a decade of excellence, but a celebration of educational achievements, cultural exchange. And the bonds of friendship between our nations. The success stories of the Filipino scholars under the Chinese Ambassador Scholarship serves as a testament to the power of partnership and collaboration. Through education, we break down barriers and build a foundation for a brighter and more interconnected future. This institute. Adds vigor to the great cause of Chinese language education. It has also become an important brand for the promotion of Chinese language and a platform for partnerships in the education sector. The Navy's tradition of providing academic support to our students creates a rippling effect and creates an auspicious cycle of kindness, benevolence, and. 菲律宾师范大学校长杜佳博士和菲律宾大学副校长阿格鲍瓦教授衷心感谢中国驻菲使馆给予两校贫困学子的经济支持。I hope that our countries will continue and strengthen academic and cultural cooperation. To the present grantees of the scholarship program, I wish you all the best and all the opportunities ahead of you. We hope that this opportunity granted to us will impact our societies as we, scholars and educators, will ensure the quality of education that we will provide among our future learners. And I hope that the Chinese Ambassador Scholarship Program continues to inspire and empower young bright minds with the opportunity to pursue academic excellence, awe-inspiring experiences, and lasting connections. 学生代表讲述了中国大学奖学金项目给他们人生道路带来的巨大改变，立志在毕业后尽其所能回报社会，促进非中友好。校友代表表示。中国大使奖学金为他们提供了更广阔的看世界的视角，自己受益匪浅，期待有更多学子从中受益。联欢会上还播放了由两校学生制作的纪念视频，非师大学生代表演唱了歌曲《攀登》。非中新闻台综合报道。The associations in the Filipino Chinese community donated decoy to the Manila city government. 华社各团体赠送新春年糕与马尼拉市政府。二月五号上午，非中爱心基金会在马尼拉市政府举行了温馨且充满意义的华社各团体赠送年糕仪式，向马尼拉市政府送上满满的新春祝福。活动伊始，马尼拉市政府细心策划了详师点睛的特别环节，为仪式拉开了序幕。并增添了浓厚的新春氛围。在锣鼓喧天的喜庆声中，马尼拉市长拉库纳与非华商联总会理事长施东方博士、非华各界联合会主席蔡永宁、菲律宾中博商会会长侯世烈
和飞华工商总会理事长谢国万一同为醒狮点睛，象征着共同迎接农历龙年的美好。在随后的赠送仪式上，马尼拉市长拉库纳代表市政府接受了华社的新春年糕。他由衷感谢华社的友好祝福，并高度肯定华社在马尼拉市以及整个菲律宾的建设与发展所做出的卓越贡献。本次赠送年糕仪式不仅是华社向马尼拉市政府表达新春祝福的一种方式，也是非中两国人民友好交流的又一例证。非中新闻台综合报道。Hongpao, kilala rin bilang laisi o ampao. Hindi lang basta sobring pula, ito ay simbolo ng swerte, enerhiya at kaligayahan sa kultura ng Chino. Sa tradisyong Chino, hindi lamang pera ang kahalagahan ng ampao, kundi ang pulang sobre mismo. Ang red color nito ay sumisimbolo ng lakas, kaligayahan at swerte. Kaya naman pinaniwala ang nakaligayahan at swerte na ang dala sa taong tatanggap nito. Alam niyo ba kung saan nagsimula ang tradisyong ito? Ayon sa isang sinaunang kwento, may demonyong nagangalang Sui na lumilito sa mga bata. Upang protektahan ng mga anak, mga angpaw ang gamit ng kanilang mga magulang para sila ay protektahan. Ayon sa kwento, sa bisperas ng Chinese New Year, binigyan ng isang bata ng walong coins na balot ng pulang papel. Ang walong coins na ito ay kumislap at nagtaboy sa demonyo nang subukan itong saktan ang bata. Kaya naman nakasanayan na, sa panahon ng Chinese New Year, ang mga bata at matatanda ay nagbibigayan ng red envelopes. Ang pera sa loob o Yasui Kian ay simbolo ng paghahangad ng ligtas at mapayapang bagong taon. Karaniwan sa bispiras o mismong araw ng Chinese New Year, ang mga bata ay nagbibigay galang sa kanilang magulang at lolo at lola. At bilang ganti, sila'y nakakatanggap ng angpao. Ito ay simbolo ng pag-asang magdala ng swerte sa bagong taon. Ang angpao, higit pa sa isang regalong pera. Ito ay isang sagisag ng mahabang kasaysayan at mayamang kultura na patuloy na nagbibigay ng saya at swerte sa bawat henerasyon. Kapag Chinese New Year, hindi lang ito basta pagdiriwang ng bagong taon. Ito rin ay panahon ng pagpapanatili ng mga tradisyonal na patiniwala at gawe upang makaiwas sa malas at masalubong ang swerte. Isa sa mga paniniwala ay ang paghahanda ng tikoy, simbolo ng paghigpit ng family bond. Ang pag-alsa ng tikoy, simbolo naman ng pag-angat ng kabuhayan. Mahalaga rin ang paghahanda ng pansit, simbolo ng mahaba at masaganang buhay. Huwag daw putuli ng pansit para hindi maputol ang daloy ng swerte. Mahalaga rin ang pagsusuot at pagsasabit ng kulay pula, simbolo ng lakas at proteksyon laban sa masasamang elemento. Ang pagpapaputok, hindi lang simpleng selebrasyon kundi para rin magbigay liwanag at kasaganaan sa bagong taon. Para sa mga hindi makakadalo, inilalaan ang bakanting upuan sa pag bilang simbolo ng kanilang presensya. Bawal daw magwali sa araw ng bagong taon sa paniniwalang maitataboy nito ang swerte. Bawal din ang pag-iyak at pag o pag ng buhok dahil nangangahulugan ito ng pag-alis ng magandang kapalaran. Ang paniniwalang ito ay ilan lamang sa maaring sundin sa pagsalubong ng Chinese New Year. Walang masama kung susundin at marahil makakatulong pa nga ito para sa mas masaya at maswerting taon. Yuli Dongfang Luyo Yu Xin Gong Si Union Travel Incorporated. And that officially wraps today's episode. It's my pleasure to introduce myself once more as your host, Candice Sen. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I sincerely hope you enjoyed what you've seen. Be sure to catch the next episode of Chinatown TV next week for more exciting content. We'll see you next time.